welcome to my channel. Instead of our normal Tuesday tutorial today, I am, as promised, sharing with you uh, the finished product from my Crafty City YouTube hop that we started back in March. We were celebrating my friend Archana's 10th anniversary of her Crafty City online scrapbooking store. And she had sent me this kit. I just printed it out to remind you. Look at all the goodies in there. So beautiful. This is P13 Stitched with Love. And she included all these goodies in the kit. And then I added a few goodies of my own. And I created an 8x8 made from scratch tri-fold folio. It has inch and a half spines. And I started out with a piece of this um, 110 pound cardstock. It comes in an 18 inch length and it's 13 inches tall. So it's perfect for a project like this. I did have to connect a couple of them together. Uh, just by joining, overlapping, and joining. So I trimmed this to eight inches, two of them, and then overlapped it about a quarter of an inch using score tape, and then I just scored and folded. So that is the basic of the base. And then to strengthen that, I put another layer of 110 pound of this very pale blush cardstock over it as an extra layer, and it creates a thick, heavy cover that feels like chipboard even though it's just cardstock. So we'll take a look at the cover. Of course these beautiful Prima butterfly trim was in the kit as were these covered buttons. Um, this is a little embroidery hoop embellishment I had in my stash and I turned this into a shaker element. And then inside, I added the adorable wooden icons that came in the kit and this 100% handmade uh, chipboard piece that I painted with ivory cardstock. This is the ribbon and the flowers and leaves that came in the kit. And these are some ribbons that I had in my stash with leaves that came in the kit. And these little scissors were from my stash. So I created a stitched spine. I just took some... Uh, ticking material that I had and I cut it um, the width which is about four inches and then stitched along the sides and then I used score tape to attach it to the spine of the album. Not only do I like the contrast that this provides but it really strengthens that spine so that with opening and closing it's going to hold up. And then I just created this little dangle charm for the spine with, uh, this is a sewing themed folio. So here's like a dress form and a sewing machine, little scissors, and then I've got some leaves in here. Um, just all real sweet sewing themed icons. So the folio has a magnetic cover and you can see it opens out like this. So each panel is eight by eight. The spines are an inch and a half. So basically I scored at eight, then went over an inch and a half and scored, scored at eight, went over an inch and a half and scored. And then this piece that was left on the end, I scored here because you have to, you have to change the measurements on the inside or it won't close. So this is six and a half and there's no spine here. This is just a flap. So we'll start exploring this over here on the left. It's big, so we have to just look at it section by section. And for this page, I cut my, I left my paper the 12 inches wide and then scored it at four to create a flap page. So I love how this tips in. And then I took the four by four images from the collection and left them connected together and just scored in between to create a little pull out element on the front. So this is a great place to add photos and journaling and this little mini paper clip just holds everything in place. Then on the inside I took another 4x4 and turned it into a pocket on the flap and then I just took these sweet banner elements that are in the paper collection and tucked them in there. And of course you can put a photo here and you can add journaling on the tags. This page of course is all connected and this is one of the 6x4 elements that I turned into a pocket and again I just tucked 
these sweet tags inside. These are so precious. I love these. You could put small photos on the back or just add journaling and a larger photo here. And here's an example of fussy cut images that I use throughout to decorate the album. The center panel is a box pocket. And I do have tutorials on my YouTube channel. If you go to my uh, Paper Crafting 101 playlist, there is a tutorial there called All About Pockets, and it will guide you through how to create a box pocket. So I call these tea parties in a box. I love to make these. As far as I know, it's, a, it's an original idea with me, but I love to create these little tea parties in a box. So in here, I've got a little vintage silver plate demi tasse spoon. I've got a honey stick that I've decorated up with a scrap of paper. I have a packet of Biscoff cookies that I've wrapped up and decorated with scraps of my designer paper. And then I've got a chocolate, a Ghirardelli chocolate that I do the same thing. I just wrap it up and decorate it. And then this is the little folio, uh, the little notebook that came in my kit. It was too tall. So I had to trim it with my guillotine trimmer and then come in with my crocodile and trim the corners so that it would fit in this pocket. But I thought this would be sweet to add in there as a little journal, or you could even add loads and loads of photos in here. And I just dressed it up with little bits and bobs these sweet wooden icons, fussy cuts, banner pieces, and then um, uh, paper from the collection. So everything just goes in here. And once you've had the treats, the pocket becomes a wonderful place to store photos and such. All right, so let's move this over. This is the six and a half inch panel, and I turned this into a kinetic waterfall feature. So these are really fun to make. Um, one of the things that I like to do um, is strengthen the back piece of this with a heavier piece of cardstock behind it. And I just find that it holds up better. So that's really fun. And then over here is a double pocket. And this is where I put the tea bags. I chose tea bags that match the collection to finish out the tea party. And then I put these two little four by six cards in the pocket for journaling or for um, additional photos. And then this is the front, this is the, um, let me see. Yeah, this is the inside flap, sorry. And I just created a pocket here. I folded, I cut this paper to the width of the flap, which is four, the paper is four and a quarter, so the flap is four and a half. And then I just took the little three by fours and did the same thing where I scored to turn them into an accordion album. So you have room for photos, and on the back you can do photos or journaling, and then they just tuck in the pocket. Fussy cut along the top of the pocket, um, just to create this pretty shape. So then this folds in like this, and here's the front flap. I placed magnets down the side so I didn't have to do a ribbon closure. Here's just an example of all those beautiful fussy cuts stacked up over one of the fussy cut hoops, and then another of the four by four elements from the paper, and it closes like this. So really fun to make. Um, I just loved working with this paper. Anything with a sewing theme, I tend to really enjoy working with. But I had a ton of paper left over. So the question became, what do I do with it? So I made a bunch of cards, sewing themed cards. This one is five and a half by five and a half. You can see I've added machine stitching, more fussy cut flowers, a little sewing machine charm from my stash, one of the wooden icons, some seam binding ribbon from my stash, and this is a ribbon that came in the paper collection. And then on the inside, I just wanted to show you, there's that wonderful embroidery hoop paper. It's really fun to cut out. Um, like this one was cut off on the side, but look how perfectly it works on the side. And then I added the little sticker to make a sentiment panel up here. And then down here is a pocket and I just went into my stamps and created a little um, sentiment 
panel. You could write a note on the back. And then the, this is a little bookmark. And I just wanted to show you, you can use these banner pieces to do that. I just scored a quarter inch flap, layered them over one another. And then if you're reading a book, this goes over the page and it will mark your place. So I thought that was fun. There are still some of us out there who read actual books. So that is card number one. And then the next one I made is this little Z fold um, cutaway. And this has a ribbon belly band. Here's that beautiful butterfly and flower. The seam binding just pulls off like this. And then this will open out like this. And inside here, I added another one of those sweet little bookmarks. I stitched along the top of this one. And then I did a little packet of vintage pearl buttons with a little sewing charm and ribbon on the top. So these make really, really, really lovely gifts. And the next one I made, I'm trying to get these in the order of how I made them. Yes, this one. This is a little double pocket card. And um, this little pocket on the front, here's the butterflies down the side. It's even pretty without the little bag. I put one of these sweet little bags in there, stamped a sentiment on another one of those fussy cut hoops, tied this with ribbon, and on the inside I have a length of seam binding tied with baker's twine and another little packet of vintage buttons. Just so sweet little gift. And then this pocket here pulls out and it's a bookmark and it says this is where I fell asleep. So just fun little these make great gifts I love to do cards that double as a gift um, and I do that a lot then the next card that I made is let me see yes is this one this is that gorgeous sewing machine and I just dry brushed this with a little ivory chalk paint lots of stitching on the panels uh, thread, loose thread kind of clumped up in there to add texture and to go with the theme, the sweet little embroidery hoop, wooden buttons, and then these little doilies I had in my stash and machine stitching, lots of distressing. This one is much more distressed than the others. Then on the inside, I pieced. This was one piece, this was another piece. So when you're getting low on your paper, this is a really good trick. You can take these smaller pieces and group them together and no one would even guess that this was two separate pieces of paper joined by this piece of paper here. The little banner is from the sticker sheet that came in the collection. And then down here, I've decorated the pocket with a butterfly, I've added a tea bag, a honey stick, and a chocolate. So these make sweet little birthday gifts and that sort of thing. Then the next card I made is this sweet collage typed card. This is seven by five. Can you believe how much I got out of that one paper collection? I'm kind of astonished myself. So again, just adding like little things from my stash, the washi tape, these little buttons. This is a little thimble I had, a little chipboard dress mannequin. Um, baker's twine, this is a little needle charm, the 100% handmade. Here's what I did to make it stand out. I, I adhered it over a gold foiled washi tape, which just made it pop. Then you could see it. And then wrapped the top with baker's twine and a little scissor charm and flower from my stash. So inside, here's another little cluster. Of, these are just scraps that I cut to be banner flags, sticker, fussy cut. And then this is another four by six um card to write your own personal sentiment so pretty and a lot of this is just little pieces bits and bobs that are left over um, you don't have to use a whole panel here on the green you can piece that in there so that's a good tip then the very last thing i did um this one i'm really proud of these are all just little scraps they were just little scraps that i had left over and this is a slim line this is, uh, the base is, hold on, yeah, four and a half by eight and a half. And I just cut all these little pieces to a width. I want to say it's three and, let me see, 
yeah, three and five eighths. They're all cut to three and five eighths. And then I did this as a cutaway card. So this is four by eight and a half. The back side is four and a half by eight and a half. So anyway, I just cut these all the same width and then laid them out on a piece of green cardstock from my stash and stitched them together on my sewing machine. And then just very simply glued the butterfly trim on the front. It is such a pretty card and it's so easy to make. Here's all those fun embroidery hoops. And what I did was I just took some of my stamps and stamped sentiments on the inside. It's so simple, but it works so great. And then over here is a little pocket that I built and another little bookmark, one of those fun little bookmarks made with the banners, and then just a little note card tucked in. So I was thrilled. I got six cards and this beautiful folio out of the kit from Artana. If you go to craftycity.com and look for the Stitched with Love kit, she still has it available. If you use the code Kathy, um, capital K, A T H Y, and the number 10, you will get 10% off your order. Uh, check out her shop. She has so many beautiful kits. She does such a good job of curating these kits so that they're really special. Archana, I just want to thank you again for inviting me to help you celebrate your 10th anniversary. Thank you all for coming back to see what I made with my kit. I wish you all loads and loads of joy and creativity. And now I'm going to go get my craft on. Thanks. Mm -hmm.